There, 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 there. You see, who's hurting you, you silly girl? What do you take me for? I take me by bloat. I never said a word. Oh, shut up, shut up. Do I look like a policeman? Then what did you take down my words for? How do I know whether you took me down right? You just show me what you wrote about me. What's that? That ain't proper writing. I can't read that. I can. Cheer up, Captain. Half a flower, poor girl. It's because I call him Captain. I meant no harm. Oh, sir, don't let him lay a charge against me for a word like that. You... I make no charge. Really, sir, if you are a detective, you need not begin protecting me against molestation by young women until I ask you. Anybody could see the girl meant no harm. How do you come to be so far east? You were born in Liston Grove. Oh, what harm is there in my leaving Liston Grove? It wasn't fit for a pig to live in, and I had to pay four and six a week. <laughs> live where you like, but stop that noise. Come, come, he can't touch you. You have a right to live where you please. I'm a good girl, I am. Do you know where I come from? Mm, Cheltenham, Harrow, Cambridge, and India. <laughs> Quite right. <laughs> May I ask, sir, do you do this for your living at a music hall? No, I thought of that. Perhaps I shall someday. Poor girl. Hard enough for her to live without being warranted and shivvied. How do you do it, if I may ask? Simple phonetics. The science of speech. That's my profession, also my hobby. Happy is a man who can make a living by his hobby. You can spot an Irishman or a Yorkshire man by his brogue. I can place any man within six miles. I can place him within two miles in London and sometimes two streets. Ought to be ashamed of himself, unmanly coward. But... Is there a living in that? Oh, yes, quite a fat one. This is the age of upstarts. Men begin in Kent Town with 80 pounds a year and end in Park Lane with 100,000. They want to drop to Kent. They want to drop Kentish Town, but they give themselves away every time they open their mouths. Now I can teach them. Let how him cool. mind his own business and leave a poor girl. Woman, cease this detestable boohooing instantly, or else seek the shelter of some other place of worship. I have a right to be here if I like, same as you. A woman who utters such depressing and disgusting sounds has no right to be anywhere. No right to live. Remember that you are a human being with a soul and the divine gift of articulate speech. That your native language is the language of Shakespeare, Milton, and the Bible. And don't sit there crowing like a bilious pigeon. Ah. Heavens, what a sound! Oh! God. You see, this creature with her curbstone English, the English that will keep her in the gutter to the end of her days. Well, sir, in three months, I could pass this girl off as a duchess at an ambassador's garden party. I could even get her a place as a lady's maid or a shop assistant, which requires better English. That's the sort of thing I do for commercial millionaires. And on the profits of it, I do genuine scientific work in phonetics, and a little as a poet and Miltonic lines. Hmm. I myself am a student of Indian dialects, and I was recently just over... Are in... you? Do you know Colonel Pickering, the author of spoken Sanskrit? I am Colonel Pickering. Who are you? Henry Higgins, author of Higgins Universal Alphabet. <laughs> I came from India to meet you. I was going to India to meet you. <laughs> Where do you live? 27A Wimpole Street. Come and see me tomorrow. I'm at the Carlton. Come with me now and let's have a jar with some supper. Right you are. Buy a flower, kind gentleman. I'm short for me lodging. I really haven't any change. I am sorry. A liar. Earlier you said you could change half a crown. You ought to be stuffed with nails, you ought. Take the old blooming basket for sixpence. A reminder. Come, come. 